The flashback arc is finally over, and now we will get back towards the main story and the main characters, all the all the characters up to date. Now we we have the flashback like volume for volume zero, and now this whole last flashback arc was well, at like two volumes worth. But we are getting back to the main characters. We got Yuji, Makumi, we got Kugisaki, like Satoru up like juiced in his prime, and even getting to some of the villains again. So, but we did get the interaction between Satoru and Megumi. What exactly led up to kind of, you know, mentor-mentee relationship. And when he was talking to him, he was, like, talking about how he's probably already developed his, uh, his curse technique. He's probably already in sea curses. And, you know, he's even going to bring up the fact that he killed Megumi's dad. But he, Megumi just doesn't care. Like, he hasn't seen the guy in years. He said he barely remembers what he looks like. And so has uh, it's Miki's mom, that being his sister. You know, we, we know uh, some information about she seems to have a curse on her. Doesn't seem to be waking up anytime soon. But he, he pretty much just wants to do whatever would be good for her. Because we know from Satoru, or not from Satoru, from, from Papa Goro, from Otoji, that his son was going to get sold to the Zenimi clan at some point within the... I think he was said, like, what, two years? And it's been a year since then, so, you know, he's only got a little bit left. And Satoru, probably feeling a little bit bad about it, you know, decides to end up taking him on and, you know, wanting to help him. So, like, you can even see, like, some of the worry in his face when, uh, when Megumi just says, like, he doesn't care that they if, if you killed his dad or not. And he's even to the point where Satoru is just like, Are, aren't you, like, in first grade? <laughs> like, why are why are you so level-headed and mature? But it's probably just because he, you know, had to mature a lot faster given his situation. And when, like, talking about, you know, that fact that he'll be sold to the Zenian clan, you have, uh, Megumi's like, what will happen to uh, Sumiki? Because if they go there, he wants to know if that'll make her happy, and Satoru doesn't know whether or not that'll be the case. And you can tell from his facial expression when Megumi hears this, he's not happy about the possibility of her not getting a good time out of it. Because now he's, he's, you know, he's out to do things for her, keep her happy. You know, he's she's probably all he's really got. And Satoru at that point, you know, knowing that he's not really going to like that option, decides to end up taking him under his wing. And the one thing we do know that Satoru has, even though he's not, you know, he's not probably the full, like, level of flex in terms of, I, I would say in terms of, like, Maybe not political position, but like overall, you know, like family influence as he's a member of the Gojo clan, but obviously the Zenin clan, you know, they're, they're higher up on the theoretical totem pole, but really what are they going to do to Satoru? Like Satoru is just going to be like, yeah, you guys aren't taking him. It's like, what are you going to fight him? He's going to kick the shit out of you. But then he's, uh, you know, he, he wants him to be strong and he wants Gumi to grow up more powerful and... You know, he, he wants to keep the guy, probably do some form of, you know, token for OG after all that. I'm, I really want to know what his full reasoning for doing it. I, I want to hopefully we get at some point some converse, conversation between the two of them explaining, like, why exactly he took him in, even though he's the one that killed uh, that. Let me get back to the current timeline. We actually get a date. Like, the current time is October 19th, 2018. So a year ago... Uh, in October. I'm surprised it's actually in October. I thought that was kind of interesting. And uh, interesting as well is it's a week from now, because in Japan right now, it's the 12th. So, you know, a week from now, obviously, for them, the 19th, and in October. So I'm wondering if the date has anything specific or if maybe, uh, you know, maybe Akutami just liked the date for some reason. Maybe there's something special going on. I don't know. But... And then you see Yuji, Kugisaki, and Megumi, and they end up waking up Satoru, who seems pretty happy about, you know, seeing all these kids when he opens his eyes, you know, lifts his little blindfold up, and just seems to be in a good mood. Also, just him standing, like, if he stands there next to, next to Megumi, I think Satoru is, like, six foot one, six foot two. He's huge for a Japanese guy. And they end up getting back to, kind of, like, the mission at hand. You have Utehime, who's, like, explaining to them, you know, the whole information about the mole, there's going to be, they, they suspect two moles, one higher up and one kind of, you know, lower that feeds the higher up. And we didn't find out who the higher up was, but I have my suspicion because we found out the reason why the lower member of the moles 
uh, took that spot and the person that it was and you can see the this little you know a little bit of discomfort and upset on Uzume's face because you know he was a member of her crew and the lower mole is Mechamaru you know the guy that panda fought you know he's got a messed up body but he's able to pretty much control robotic puppets and you know for for her you know somebody in, in her her gang ending up being you know betraying them feeding information to the the curse users that's gonna you know that's gonna really get under his skin but here it is they they go to you know go to find him you, have, you actually got a really cool panel of just yuji getting up busting the door down and you just see him punch through this like steel door just dent it and make it fly across the room i just thought that was a cool little entryway probably pretty intense for for seeing it but then it's Mechamaru, and when you see like the whole situation when he's like inside the door and you think oh what he says like oh you guys you know you guys have come you think he's talking to them but when they get in the room's empty and i'm wondering like do they do they like have him like down here normally because it's just a chair in a room it's probably probably like the poor train is like well fuck this i'm getting out of this place but who he's talking to was actually Ghetto and mojito so we're not only getting in the current status of uh of where he is ghetto back but we're also getting that young boy mojito ready to you know go about his young villainous villainous villain villain ways i mean he's definitely like a bad guy i mean with i mean you could kind of look at perspective of curses and you know they're not human so them were you know it's not the exact same i mean but he clearly likes doing bad things so i kind of I, I don't really see him as a good guy um uh, but ghetto who he's a villain but we know his this whole reason behind it we know like from his perspective he's doing a good thing i'm I'm very curious to know what the like more close relationship between ghetto and mojito is because mojito likes curses he treats curses like you know like friends he's close to them but he doesn't like humans whereas ghetto likes shamans he cares a lot about the shamans but he hates non-shamans and he doesn't seem to like curses, but he seems to hate the non-shamans more. And then they're talking to, uh, you know, talking to Mechamaru. They're explaining how, you know, they made a deal together that he would give them information and he'd be a mole for them. But in return, you're going to have Mihito use his idol, uh, yeah, transfiguration. I keep say, almost saying transmutation, but use his idol transfiguration to heal his body because, you know, he's, his whole thing is just re, uh, reconstruct, like, constructing reshaping the soul so he can pretty much heal the body fix all the wounds get him into like an actual credible state of of not just being this constantly bandaged constantly hooked up to all these beans like barely alive kind of guy they're explaining to it again because mojito's just like why can't i just kill him through this guy we don't need him he's a mole they know about him so really what value does he have now but with that, the whole thing is they they explain the whole the like level of severity with a uh, a binding vow because like if you do it to yourself, if you break it, then whatever you gained lost, but you don't know what it is that might happen to you if you break a bind or another person because you know the the difference in like one party to two party kind of situation, and then you know Mikamaru gets his body back. The thing is, it's really sad for him. He's, he's got his body back. He's well. He's always been like this. So really, he's got a body for like the first time. He's really got like this well constructed body. He's actually healthy. He can move around, and it looks like you know he, he's, he's hmm, sorry. Off the bit all that. It looks like he's facing death now. Depending on how much preparation he had, because you know as this fight is going, we're getting a setup between him and Mahita, which is going to be really cool. Really looking forward to that. We saw like his attacks were powerful from one robot, and here he's got multiple. With Mahito, I'd be willing to believe that he, you know, could put up a fight with him depending on how many robots he had, how depending on how prepared he is to fight him, and completely depending on like what kind of strategy he has. Plus, with Mahito's power, he might not be able to affect the robots because they're they're robots. They don't have a soul. He's controlling them, and I know that some series where robots have souls, but. This is more like straight puppetry. He's, he's pretty much a robot puppet master. And I would believe that he would be able to fight Mahito and do something considerable. Maybe, I don't think he'd manage to kill Mahito, but I think he'd maybe be able to like push him back long enough for him to escape. 
or maybe cause him to retreat. Maybe, you know, he's got a, other kind of, like, things set up. Ghetto, no. Ghetto is, is a special grade. He's too powerful, and especially them together. Mechamaru's kind of screwed. He's obviously got no choice, given the situation he's in. I wish that they would have just take the guy. I mean, he's he's a cool character. He's useful, because the whole reason that the, uh, the Jujutsu group su like, suspected him is because... The, the fact that they found him suspicious in, in several ways generally, but also his uh, puppet control. He can uh, control his, um, his, you know, his, what was the best way it would call it? I don't know, his his little avatars. Like, he can control them anywhere in the country. Like his whole range is the country. So he's got this high level of, uh, like, espionage, like, message relay. He can obviously do multiple at a time. And they even say, like, he... He could control one the size of a mosquito. So, like, you could just have him constantly learning things, constantly seeing things. Obviously, that's a really useful character to have, maybe too useful to have, and it would just cause, like, a higher level of, like, complications. But it doesn't look like they're willing to take the risk. It's a shame, because, like, he, if he appealed to Ghetto, I feel like he could end up getting on his side as a shaman, you know, trying to aid him in some way. is not going to have any form of, like, yeah, you can convince to be on my side. I, I, I just don't see it with him. Like, Mahito is very, very selective. He doesn't like humans. The only humans I think that he give any form of cred for that we've already seen is probably because Ghetto, like, put him in that position where it's like, you know, you gotta, you gotta deal with them. You gotta deal with it for work, man. But, uh, that's just gonna be a really cool fight because we're gonna get a straight villain fight and it's not gonna be like when Nanami fought Mahito because Nanami, even though he could have died... It was still really early for his character. It would have been a bit of a shame if he got lost so early. But the fact that he lived, you know, we knew that he was good. more stuff was going to come out of him later. Mechamaru, he's got potential, but his character right now, he could easily get ended here. Like, very easily. The, there's not a lot of... The, well, there's there's stuff that he could impact. Obviously, members of a team could be feel bad, you know, probably have some form of vendetta against Mahito, even though... Uh, Mechamaru was a bad guy, you know, betrayed him, we'll probably still have some, you know, bent up feelings about it, but he, he's a character that you can kill off, and for the most part, it won't be, like, some big event thing, like, killing off someone, again, like Nanami, like, losing Nanami would be big for them, because he's a pretty, you know, pretty high-ranked character within, you know, the main cast faction, or, you know, over on, uh, in, in the Curse Users. Hanami, because he's a pretty high rank guy in their group. You know, something that's like, maybe they're not the main character, maybe there's some, like, crazy impact on the main character as well. It, it could just be, you know, something that a character dies and it's something significant and it's like, we need to account for this. Mechamaru dying off, it's really just gonna be like, damn, you know, probably done something brutal. I see him probably do something crazy. I wonder if he's gonna drop his area expansion. We could get something from uh, Mechamaru. It would be cool to see like him get an area expansion right like right before he died because him getting a, his body finally getting a healthy body could be like some form of reason of like to, to kind of like shock his first energy into like a state beyond kind of like what Mahito got when he was fighting and uh, almost died and unlocked his. Other than that, comment below. This is a really interesting setup because a straight fight with Mahito is going to be pretty sick. Uh, I want to see what Ghetto has to say about it. Ghetto's just going to be watching and comment on. But other than that, thumbs up the video from the like button and subscribe button and check out my other videos. I appreciate everyone who's already subscribed and I thank you all for listening. Bye.